Hey Stampers, I'm Meg from Lovin Stamps, and the project I have to share with you today is our wrap up of celebration. So only a couple of days left actually, but today's the 30th. Man, this time goes fast, doesn't it? Uh, anyway, I'm looking for my, there it is. Nope, that's not it. Anyway, the celebration mini, apparently I've already cleaned it out. Uh, so we're going to wrap up one last project with the Ringed with Nature stamp set, which is continuing. This one is not on the, um, this one's from the mini catalog. So you'll still be able to get this in the fabulous dies. I'm going to show you a great trick for making embossed die cuts today. And I'm going to actually show you how the die and the uh, rings fit together. And we are going to make a cute little treat pouch that is perfect for um, all kinds of fall treats or Christmas treats or really pretty much any occasion. It's one that I um, have used quite a few times over the years. I think you're really gonna like it. Uh, we also are featuring the uh, Rings with Love, Rings of Love designer series paper. Um, it's this one here and features um, these fun fall colors and also then this Christmas sheet here at the end, which is the one I'm gonna use. But you could of course make these pouches for any occasion. Um, this is your last chance to get this today and tomorrow uh, before it is no more and we say goodbye to celebration. So, all right, I, I just tightened my camera holder. I think I'm getting shorter here. All right, are you guys ready to get started? Um, card stock uh, or paper for this is a six by six piece of designer series paper. So basically you're just gonna cut your designer series paper into four pieces and you will um, be ready to get going. So I'm gonna show you how to fold these cute little treat pouches. All right, oh, good morning everybody. Hey, Carol and Teresa and Sue and Deborah and Kathy and Tanya and everybody who's watching. So I know um, sometimes people are like, oh, I don't really wanna listen to you say hello to everyone, but I really believe that we are uh, a community of crafters together. And so I think it's fun to just, you know, say hi to everybody. I love when you guys say hi to each other, so. Anyway, all right, hey Gwen, I'm gonna go ahead and flip our camera down and we will get started. So, like I said, um, today's card is actually going to be Christmas themed. And one of the great things about that is that um, this stamp set, the Ringed with Nature stamp set, really gives you a lot of choices for um, kind of making the most of things. So you are not limited really just to fall things. And I am totally, not in the right place. Let's get a little closer here. Um, anyway, we are going to um, go ahead and work here with our paper first. So I'm gonna show you the folding process. Um, so one of the trickiest things when you're using a paper that has direction to it, like this tree, is you wanna think um, a little bit about what you want to be at the, um, sort of at the top of your pouch. So um, I'm gonna show you how this works and then you probably, um, when you're making yours, you wanna go back and just look at how I oriented it, it'll make more sense. But this is a really easy treat pouch and one of my favorite things about it is using the, um, or favorite tricks about making it work out well is to use the grid paper, okay? See how we're lined up on here? Um, so what you're gonna do is gonna go ahead and fold um, first on the uh, long line, so you're just gonna fold corner to corner across there, okay? And I don't worry too much about using a bone folder to crease. I don't wanna accidentally um, rip through my designer series paper, and this is, uh, it's gonna hold together um, really nicely in the end, and I'll show you how. So now, this is the trickiest step. So what I like to do is make sure that my um, paper is kind of lined up here, on my, um, my DSP is lined up on my grid because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this corner across to sort of midway on here. And what I wanna do is I wanna look across and see that this line is straight. And the easiest way to see that this line is straight and sort of like parallel with the bottom is to just look and see on the grid if it's matching up. So it's just a little above that line, a little above that line. So it looks good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and fold that. Okay. You could even move it right down here. Okay. And you'll be able to see right there that we got a straight line. Then the second thing is to take this corner, and you're gonna meet this um, edge over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold that across, and go ahead and you see how we see this straight line right here again. Okay. Hey Sue. Hey Trish. <laughs> All right. 
I'm going to then go ahead and crease that. And really, this is how simple this little cheech pouch is. Um, if you are looking for something fun to do, um, oh, I should finish it before I talk that way. Um, I'm gonna take this now and just fold this back. And then um, that is gonna hold it all together. And then the final thing is to just sort of open this up here. And that gives you like your final, like this is not gonna come apart. I think if you're like an origami person, you'd actually fold this back or something like that. And then it's like a little drinking cup. Um, but I really like this presentation of it because it gives us a really nice um, front here that can be decorated. And you can see that even though this paper that was on the inside had some direction to it, um, it works out okay to fold it this direction. Now, if your trees were upside down, that might be a little trickier, but these, um, these work nicely here. So pay attention if your paper has some direction to it. Okay, so super simple. That took us hardly any time at all. And of course you could do with any of the designer series papers. So here's another one from that same pouch. And since this is your celebration paper, um, you're gonna end up with you know a whole bunch of it. Feel free to order it more than once if you love it. Um, and you'll know that you'll have some great projects to do. So, all right, so let's get back to decorating. Uh, I can't remember, I lost track of what I was gonna say. Probably was not very important. Um, oh, it was about like if you were gonna make trick or treat pouches or something, you could whip up a whole bunch of these really quickly. Now, the next question is usually what fits inside there. And the answer to that is lots of things. Um, I think they are perfectly sized though for Giardelli chocolates like this. Um, so I love doing that. You could actually use these for gift cards. Let me show you um, a really quick uh, trick here for how you could make them um, be a little bit closer to gift cards holder size. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the same six by six paper. So here we go. And we're just gonna make it with a wide bottom this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and orient my paper the same direction. I'm gonna start off by folding up from the bottom. And then when I fold across, instead of folding um, so far up, I'm gonna fold it a little further um, down and I'm going to leave this open. So a gift card, if you have one handy when you're doing this, that's kind of the smartest answer. Um, but see how I've got it straight and I've got this straight, okay. Oops, I just folded it crooked though. And then this one I'm gonna fold and I'm just gonna meet that same line. So see how we have a really wide bottom here? Okay, so we have a wide bottom version here versus the one that's a little bit tighter for GR Jelly Chocolates. And I'm gonna fold that down and then we have this shape pouch. So you could put your gift card in this direction if you wanted it to um, kind of stand out. I think here actually I have a I think I have a gift card. This one doesn't match, so of course it's not the one I would use for this. You could do it this way, or um, you could do it this way. And you could even adjust your pouch size here to fit the gift card exactly. So here, what if we do that? Fold, oh, see this is the problem most people do. They wanna fold at the bottom. So you're not gonna fold the bottom, you're gonna fold at the top. So we're gonna do that, and then this one a little further. There we go. Now we have the gift card holder size that fits, okay? There we go, and then this fits down into the bottom, okay? Just like that. So you could use these for gift card holders too, or you could use the gift card holder that I showed, uh, what, last week, I guess, or two weeks ago, um, this one here, which fits the fabulous, also designer series paper, okay? All right, so let's see. Um, Tanya asked what size the paper was. Yes, six by six, of course. You could do them with any size paper. Um, you could do 12 by 12 ones and fit really big stuff in there. Um, you could do uh, six or four by four and fit little tiny treats. Um, you can really adapt them to kind of whatever your needs are. So let's bring back our stamps and go ahead and uh, just and do our stamping. Um, the key really is to just making sure that you uh, start with a square, okay? All right, so I'm gonna show you this. I just inked my um, just inked my Poppy Parade stamp, so I got a nice juicy image here. And I'm gonna show you um, some tips here for cutting. So this is gonna be fussy cut. And a lot of times when I have some pointy edges on things, I like to cut all the right sides of my flower. I'm just gonna trim this a little closer. Um, just as sort of angled in, okay? So see, I'm cutting all the right side of each petal, and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna cut the left side 
to match it. So then I'm not trying to like in, 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 left, right, in, out, in, out, in, out. Okay. Of course, your mileage may vary. If you like to do the other way, go ahead. And then, so now I'm going to go back and cut all the right side edges of this, which is a little harder for me to see what's going on, but um, where's the piece that I just cut out? Oh, there it is. <laughs> a little harder for me to see because of the angle of my scissors, but it works pretty well. But what it means is that I get those nice interior angles just nice and sharp, um, so I don't have to work too hard to, um, you know, make a little swoopy in there. Uh, a rounded corner inside that is inner corner there. Much easier for me to do these straight corners. Okay, so there we have our quick point set up. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that there. And let's see, included in the dies for this stamp set are some fabulous extras. So of course um, the dies and the folder come together. It's, it's all one item um, code, so you don't have to worry about that. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of this, um, this little here. So this has the little berries and so forth on it and cut this from a piece of uh, evening evergreen cardstock. And through the magic of television now, I have this little element that's going to um, fit like this. Now, I think the easiest way to go ahead and attach this is to go ahead and flip it over to the backside and just pop a Stampin' Dimensional right there. And that will hold all the pieces. Okay, I'm gonna put one more on there uh, to get ready to put this on. So here we're gonna do this. Now I feel like this really gets lost in the background of our busy paper. So we are going to um, go ahead and, and give this like a background here so that it doesn't get lost quite so much. Um, hi, Lisa. Oh, Marcy says she loves these pockets and she forgets about them sometimes. Um, I'm glad you like the custom time size tip. Yeah, it is just really great. You know, think about whatever treat you're going to put in them and then make them the size that you need. Um, I mean, you could get, if you were doing four by four, they would end up pretty small. Um, but like if you had a Hershey's Kiss or a Hershey's Treasure or something, you could do four by four squares and then you get nine out of a paper. So yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um, all right. So we're going to go ahead and, like I said, make a background for this. And to do that, I'm going to use the Stampin' um, Emboss Folder, the Tree Rings Hybrid Embossing Folder. So the cool thing about this folder is that the die that gets that comes with it um, matches the folder exactly. So they are meant to go together and I can never remember which side. So usually I just flip it around until I see where it matches. And then you're gonna come to this point where it just clicks in, okay? So I can click it in, I'm kind of rubbing it, running it back and forth, see how tight that is there? It just fits right in the folder. And we are going to do this on a piece of the Brush Metallic cardstock. Now this cardstock is not available right now. And sometimes I'll swap stuff out so I'm not showing you things that aren't available. But this is available all year long, usually, um, when it's in stock. And it is part of that three pack of like copper and gold color. And um, just put it on your wish list and order it when it's available because it is a staple. I adore it. Um, the silvers are actually available right now as a celebration item. Uh, so you could get the silver pack for, for free as a um, $50 celebration item. So, all right, so you see, I'm gonna keep this really nice and tight because I don't want it to slide or anything. And then I am going to run this through my die cut machine. And I know sometimes I just do magic of television, but I thought I'd actually show you this one. So, um, because I've had some questions about how people do this. So when you use your die cut machine, you're going to use the pad, um, the thick pad. There is also, of course, um, the thin pad, this thin die adapter here um, that has a number two on it. This one you're not using, okay? So set that one aside. Instead, you're going to use um, the specialty plate, which is number four. And there's two versions of this. There is an older one um, that is blue and clear, uh, which usually I have in my drawer here to show you. Um, I don't see it now. But anyway, um, that one works also. Uh, this is the one, it's called the specialty plate. It's in the current catalog. And you're going to go ahead and just put this in um, here. So we have thick pad, uh, die with folder, and then the specialty plate. And you would do this whether you're using the die or not. Same sandwich. And then you're gonna crank this through here. And it is just kind of too exciting for words. Um, when it comes out the other side, you have uh, the super fabulous 
die cuts and embossed wood rounds. And they are gorgeous in this metallic cardstock. Isn't that pretty? I just, the color is perfect. Um, I didn't cut quite big enough for this one, but remember if you have these little um, fragments of things, you can always use them like on the edge of a card. So you could have, I just pulled this from a card bin. Um, you could have, you know, sort of this kind of arrangement here, there, like that. So you could use those. So I just saved mine. Um, I usually put them in a clear envelope, but lately I have been for going clear envelopes. So I'm just going to throw my extras in here um, that I will not need and have them handy for the next time. So, oh, there's a, a big one. All right. So, uh, like I said, the matching dies for this are just absolutely amazing. And they're, like I said, also in the holiday catalog, the July to December catalog. So you don't have to worry about them. Oh, Teresa said silver isn't orderable right now. Oh, thanks for the heads up. I actually, I didn't look this morning, but I did look last night. Um, the good news is that the silver will be back. So not to worry. It's like it's the end of celebration or something and people are trying to get their last uh, orders in. I guess the answer to that is do not wait for the things that you want. So, All right, so now look what happens. I said this was really busy. If I put this behind, all of a sudden our pretty poinsettia has like a home, um, a base that makes it stand out and it's so much easier to um, see that, okay? So I think our camera is moving as I talk. Anyway. Uh, so we're going to add one more thing. We need a greeting. So I have a piece of uh, craft card stock here and these supplies here are of course curated this month to go with the three other projects. Um, and so I'm going to use the same inks and papers and stuff for all of them. And that way, you know, um, that you will always have great ideas for these, uh, these supplies. Okay. So, uh, and the tutorials for those are available in my Etsy store at Loven Stamps, uh, well, Etsy at Loven Stamps or uh, Loven Stamps Etsy, I can't remember, Loven Stamps Card Shop is the name of the shop on Etsy. And they are also available for free if you place an order um, this month. You get a PDF tutorial with pictures and directions and cutting sizes and all the things. So, greeting here. Is a little bit too large. So sometimes on these little treat pouches, I'll go ahead and extend over the edge. But for this one, it felt a little bit like too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim it and go ahead and layer it here as two elements. So we're gonna kind of put it across like this, okay? So that our greeting fits a little bit more nicely on there. Now, I don't really wanna put everything on dimensionals. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my multi-purpose liquid glue and just drop a dot of it on the back of each of these on the end that is going to attach to our wood round. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and attach my wood round so that um, it doesn't move on me after I get our pieces on. So we're gonna stick that there, and then we're gonna pop our greetings on. And the, one of the advantages of the liquid glue is that you have a little time to kind of get them arranged because you can shift them just a little bit until the glue grabs. And I kind of like this a little bit off. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and put our poinsettia on. Now I have one more very important addition to this, um, and that is going to um, turn this from a cute um, pouch holder into a really cool one, um, and that is the addition of these um, rustic metallic dots. So I use these rustic metallic dots on all the other projects um, from the series for this month. So from this gift card holder, I use them here. Um, there's more wood rounds there. Um, I use them here on this version with a little um, strip and more designer series paper. And I use them here um, on our uh, trifold card here uh, with our DSP background. But for this one, we are going to use them for a specific purpose and that is to give our poinsettia um, sort of that little uh, center mark that it usually has. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to, there we go, kind of want the little ones. I'm gonna go ahead and pop three poinsettia dots right here in the center. And that is going to finish off our cute little flower just beautifully so that it matches everything else in our little elements here. And so that it, oops, like I always tell people, these take a little time to dry. Listen to yourself, Meg. <laughs> um, and it really uh, helps to round out those colors and have that fun little accent there on our poinsettia, okay? 
So like I said, a very um, simple project for today, uh, but one that you will definitely find handy um, and is easy to customize sort of um, to different themes. This one's definitely a springy or summery or um, even fall, uh, two different sizes so that you can put your gift card um, inside there. Just lots of flexibility on this fun project. All right, I have, since this is the last Maker Mornings with Meg, um, of the, well, it's a, a kind of a big last. It's the last Maker Mornings of Meg of Celebration, and it is the last uh, Maker Mornings of Meg of uh, our summer school editions, uh, because on Tuesday, we are going to start off uh, season two of Maker Mornings with Meg, and that will um, kick off a, a season uh, for the fall, which will include videos every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. Central Time. So watch for me then. Um, last season, we did Monday, Wednesday, Friday. This one, we're going to do Tuesday, Thursday. So coming soon. Uh, but I wanted to show you just a recap of some of the other celebration cards um, so that you have some ideas to either use the things that you've already gotten, which is fabulous, or to uh, go back and think if there are any last minute things that you want to get while celebration is still going on. So this is one, this is a Maker Mornings with Meg project. We talked about watercoloring with this hippo. Um, the hippo stamps I think are still available, but uh, at the moment the dyes are not. So those are already gone. Um, sort of a like last minute kind of thing. And the, I'm on the wrong page here, um, but Hippo's also available cute without the dies, or if you already have your dies, then you're going to want to look at these. This is a card by Amy Story. Uh, this is a card by Kim Peck. Um, lots of fun hippos. This is Rachel Chamberlain's card. Um, this is one by Tammy Ackerson. Um, this is one that I showed that is um, available as a Maker Mornings with Meg video, and I didn't color the hippo, and I didn't die cut it either. So don't give up on this stamp set just because the dies are gone. Um, so right there, you have that fun example. Um, this card is by Cindy Bauman, and she used that designer series paper, um, that six by six celebration paper there too. So that one is also a great celebration item. Here's a card by Linda Bowen and another hippo card by Mary McNeely. Uh, here is a card that features the designer series paper um, that we just used. This is by Jill Olson and also a very cute um, way to use that paper. Here is a card by Natalie Travis, layered with the designer series paper. It's a card by Julie Davison with a layer of that designer series paper um, and the stamp set that we used today too. Uh, here's a card by Karen Titus. She also did not die cut the hippo, so don't panic about that. And then this card is one that I've done um, for some different things. There's the uh, sort of fun inside. I did a blending brush technique around the edge of the stitched rectangles. Um, let's see, Melissa said, why can't you add rings of love paper to your order? Uh, that's a good question. Um, it shows that it's still available. I just this second double checked Melissa um, and it seems to be in the online store still. So um, a couple things to check if you're ordering online, um, the designers or the uh, celebration items are ones that you'll add to your cart after you have qualifying items in your order. So um, you'll have to have your $50 of stuff in your cart. And then as part of the checkout process, you select your um, celebration items. It'll kind of step you through that at the end. So you, you don't go to like that catalog page and click to order that item. You select them as part of a special checkout process. So um, if you still can't get it to work, well, so let me know. Um, okay. So this is one that features the folder in the background. So this one I used um, just as a pair. This is a celebration stamp set, the sketch, uh, sketch, uh, stylish sketches. I couldn't come up with it. Um, there and kind of a fun way to use that. Um, here is a card by Janice Waitman where she used the ring paper, so really similar idea. Um, here is one that features this um, gold designer paper for celebration. This is Kathy Parlites's. Uh, this one is um, by Ann Clummer. It uses stamps from the um, July through December catalog, but this greeting here, this um, hey and the good looking come from the Amazing Phrases sets, which is a $100 item. And then um, this is a card by Amanda Hinn Camper um, using the designer series paper for the wonderful 
Oh, wonderful something. Uh, <laughs> paper. Um, here's a card by Mary Ellen Stites. Um, this is that pretty floral set. I'm not sure whose card this is. Um, maybe Leanne Graff's. Uh, the um, stamps and here's a Mary McCormick card. The stamps and the paper come together. Um, this is by Susan LaCroix. And so then you can um, mix and match your pieces. Uh, this is by Becky Prather. I love these cards uh, or these colors that Becky used here. And um, this is a great die, uh, the Stitched Whimsy um, die. Here is a card that I did, um, I think early on. Sorry, it's in plastic at the moment. Here's one that's not. Um, but it uses the greenery dye here in the background, uh, which is a fun addition to any uh, florally card. Here's another card here, I'm not sure who by. This is by Sandy Rule. I know I'm going kind of fast through these. Uh, there's a lot of them. This is by Evie Di Piazza. Um, this one is by Joyce Farako. I don't have all these out of their plastics yet. Oops. Um, this one's kind of a fun design. It has a belly band on it and it opens like this and then comes back and you can slide the belly band back on it like that. Okay. Um, here is one by Margaret Van Vliet and a card by Joni Reinert. And a card by um, Ramona Simpson and a card by um, Kimberly Kane. So whew, that was our, our speed tour of the celebration uh, cards to just give you kind of one last look at the possibilities that you might want to be um, checking out there for those items. So, All right, guys. Well, that is it for this Thursday morning, uh, Tuesday morning. Wait, what is today? It's Tuesday morning and I will be back on Thursday. Oh my gosh, I am so discombobulated, guys. Okay, so you can ignore what I said earlier. This is not the last of our summer school. It is the last of celebration. I will see you on Thursday, September 1st for the last uh, summer school, Maker Mornings with Meg. And then Mon or Tuesday, the 6th, will be the kickoff of our uh, final, um, of our next season, not our final season, our second season of Maker Mornings with Meg. So anyway, my face is like turning all red. Is it hot in here? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> anyway, have a great day and I will see you guys on Thursday morning at 9.30 Central Time. Happy stamping.